Moscow is one of the most exciting cities we've ever visited and you can travel here on any budget. But just how much can you see if you're doing this on the cheap? And how crazy can you get if you have a luxury budget? Let's find out today. My favorite building is this one right here, St. Basil's Cathedral. It was built in the mid 16th century, commissioned by Ivan the Terrible, who sounds like a lovely man. And it is the epitome of Russian architecture. It is just incredibly beautiful and it looks like a gingerbread house. All those towers with the lovely little colors. And then twirling around on the square, this is the Kremlin. This used to be the Royal Citadel, where the Tsars lived way back when, mon uh, when Russia was still a monarchy. And now it is the official home of the Russian president. So Mr. Putin lives here. You won't see him, but he's here. That is the State History Museum. It has artifacts from Russian history all the way back to the Stone Age. Right next to it is Lenin's mausoleum. And then on the other side you have a very long impressive building which is the Goom shopping mall. And one of the best things about the Red Square is it is absolutely free to come here. We're going to go to uh, Alexander Garden which is right next to the Kremlin. It has a beautiful view of the Kremlin without having to actually go inside the Kremlin because money. Look at them having fun with their free activities. Nothing more fun than actually seeing the Kremlin from the inside. Let's go have a look. The Kremlin is a political powerhouse, not just of Moscow, but of all of Russia. And it's where the country was ruled from in the time of the Tsars, all the way through the communist era until modern day. And there are a lot of super impressive buildings here. They're all whitewashed with uh, lavish golden domes. This is the Assumption Cathedral, one of the first buildings you'll encounter if you walk into the Kremlin. Uh, the most popular one to visit, which you can tell by the long line waiting outside. It has the entire inside covered in frescoes, like the one you can see right behind me. And this was where the Tsars were coronated from the beginning of the 18th century onwards. Kremlin means fortress in a city. It has five palaces and four cathedrals. You can easily spend half a day exploring, as it's one of the most interesting things to do here in Moscow. There's so much history. They dates back to the 14th century when it was all started. Welcome to Alexander Garden. Just besides the wet square here, there's a beautiful garden that stretches almost for one kilometer long. It was built by Tsar Alexander in the 19th century. And it's actually really nice that you have such a lush green place right in the middle of the city center, right off the red square where there's no green at all. That really makes me wonder how those people got there. I was gonna lie in the grass, but now I'm not sure because I don't know how to get there without using my feet. I can't do it on my hands. <laughs> this is as nice and free as it's gonna get. For our budget lunch, we are heading to the upscale shopping mall of Gum, right on the Red Square. And it's a famous site called Stolovaya which is apparently a cafeteria style restaurant which is pretty good and it's very affordable. I'm getting really hungry now, I really need something for lunch. Everything looks good here, dessert, appetizers, main course is really good. So. so I took a main course, some goulash with some mashed potatoes and a dessert, so I have two courses. It's really good, especially the mashed potatoes are really fluffy. That was a really good lunch at Stolovai. For two courses each, we paid in total $14. That's for the both of us. They do basic Russian food, but they do it pretty good. So uh, cheap, affordable, and good food. But I wonder, what if we had like a big budget? What would keep, what could we eat then? Mm. I don't know. Ooh, that did look good. Some typical Russian food. Yeah, it looks like some real Russian food. Very local, very uh, plain, maybe a bit. Yeah, maybe just a bit You know what's very typical Russian? like properly Russian luxury food, mm. caviar. Ooh. Russia is the home to the best caviar in the world. Yeah. Let's Actually, try that. Let's try that. We just arrived at the Luka restaurant. I can see the Red Square from where I am sitting. The Red Square is over there. I can see the little tower, the St. Basil's Cathedral. We're going to have some caviar, we're going to have some wine. I like it. just ordered 50 grams of caviar, it's real caviar, 50 grams each. And we have this little spoon to eat it with. Because you're not supposed to eat with a metal spoon because it can give off a bad flavor. It's actually pretty affordable, it's about 20 euros each. 
in Belgium, if you have to buy this in a shop, you pay around 50 euros. If you have to eat this in a restaurant, at 100 or 150 euros per person. And we ordered this delicious sea urchin, also filled with caviar, so we're going to try that as well. Ah, you can taste this really good stuff. He's not a record show. We are on Team Spurge, but we are on Team Budget for six months. We have earned the Spurge. <laughs> Cheers. The State Armory is a treasure chamber located in the Grand Kremlin Palace. It hosts centuries worth of collection by the Tsars of artifacts, art items and jewelry which was collected from Russia and even gifts from all over the world and hosts the largest collection of gold and silverware made by Russian artisans. I would say if you only have one day to spend in Moscow, spend it in and around the Kremlin. Just go to the Red Square, walk around for a little bit, marvel at St. Basil's Cathedral, then go inside the Kremlin, look at all the beautiful cathedrals, the palaces, do a visit to the Armory because that is one of the most beautiful museums I personally have ever seen. Um, and then you will have seen the most typical Russian architecture in all of Moscow. Um, and you will really have visited the heart of Moscow, or at least culturally speaking, you will have visited the heart of Moscow. Nine dollars for two people per night. The cheapest, but also the worst hostel we've ever stayed in. But it's the cheapest we've ever stayed in. That's the cheapest we could find in all of Moscow. And that's how we booked it. That's why we booked it. Goes to show. I do like the color scheme though. This kitchen makes me very, very sad. It's so dark in here, it's just like a bunker. The kitchen is just dirty and disgusting. There's no other words for it. We we're checking in to our junior suite that we booked here in this four-star hotel. It's the Mercure Hotel, right in the city center. And uh, we're going to show you our suite in a minute. Do I look like I do this every day? Because we don't. We never have upscale rooms. I've never stayed in a suite before, but I think I could get used to this. We even have a coffee machine. So this is a small seating area. And look, there is daylight. We have an incredible bed. Oh my god. I've never had this before. A rope. So we just rented these electric scooters, really nice, they go pretty quickly. Uh, we're just right by the water now, we're gonna take them for a spin around, uh, around the city, so let's go. This beautiful building we're passing by now is the Cathedral of Christ the Savior. Time to enjoy that coffee in our very soft robes. I'm glad we don't have to stay in these hostels, you know, hear these horror stories of dirty hostels. Bunker like. Bunker like, with no light, no. I think sweet is a bit the minimum, I mean. And this is still even the junior suite, I think next time. We'll take the big suite. I want to get rid of scooter, put in a parking place somewhere, but we can't find it. Battery's dead, walking around the scooter trying to find a parking spot. But we actually only have ourselves to blame for this because the scooters were at 20% battery and we were like, no, we can do this, we can ride it out. And we did ride it out, but now it's more like a, it's not a scooter anymore, it's just a step. Can't seem to find it. That's what works going on here. Maybe they moved it. We're out of luck. It's not nearly half as fun this way. <laughs> the 
what a spot for sunset. And you can see the Kremlin all the way over there. The sky is so pink tonight from the sun. It's really nice. It's making me hungry though. <laughs> I wonder how Team Splurge is doing. Yeah, what, the, what will they be having for dinner? I don't know. <laughs> Probably gold. Leaflets of gold. Mm. So we are at the wine and crab restaurant, specialized in king crab. We are celebrating my 31st birthday again. We already celebrated it once, but we ordered some uh, crab bonbons, we ordered some fresh king crab, we ordered another appetizer. Here's to my birthday. We also have some fresh king crab, some avocado, tomato, and black pepper ice cream. I'm so curious, I just had to have it. Ooh, there's strawberry in there as well. Oh. Mm. Then there's these babies. Three king crab legs for the two of us. 750 grams of goodness. One thing, just one small thing I don't like about this restaurant is that my food is staring at me. Look, it's right there. King crabs are right there. And actually, they're catching one for another table right now. They just brought me some dynamite. It's a strawberry roll with some caramel meat. Oh. I have chocolate, caramel and Nutella ice cream. It looks very beautiful. I hope it tastes as delicious. So good. I have something crunchy with it. I don't know what it is. Nutella ice cream really tastes like hazelnuts and like Nutella. After all, it's food. I ordered a shot of vodka. But to be honest, it's actually more of a glass of vodka. But you know, man's gotta do what man's gotta do. We came to what's called the Russian pub, also in the heart of Moscow, um, and they have a lot of typical Russian food, which we're going to try. And, of course, with any real Russian meal, there's vodka. Interesting fact. A small mineral water, small still water here, is 190 rubles. Almost one of the cheaper things on the menu. This is 170. We have come to a country where vodka, a serious shot of vodka, I mean, have a look at it, is seriously cheaper than water. So we have to take it, of course. Cheers. It's ice cold. Most of the We ordered some local specialties. First one are eclairs filled with wild meat pate. It's really good. Pastry is a little bit crunchy. And the mousse is very, very... Um, and the mousse is very, very fluffy. Really good, very savory. Some crunchy things on top even. Really good. Next up is something very special. It's called muksun. It's frozen fish that's very thinly sliced. You can see this is like really, it's still frozen. It's a dish typical from Siberia where it's really, really cold in the winter and basically they, I think they have to eat a lot of things frozen or in the old times. And you have like a spice mix that you can put on this. Spice mix is a bit salty, a little bit uh, spicy. Fish is still completely frozen, and while you chew it, it melts in your mouth. Third and final dish is these meat pastries. They had a lot of meat based pastries in Russia. Um, they're hot, they're hot. Um, in India, they have like fried naan. It gets a little bit harder, but still like very thin, very crunchy. That's a little bit what this tastes like, but the mutton inside is really good. Sauce is good as well. Quite happy with this. Good morning. We grabbed some morning. coffee and chocolate muffin for breakfast. This is the budget breakfast. This is the budget <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> the budget I haven't had any coffee yet. So <laughs> You'll have to me. excuse him. 
Uh, so our breakfast costs about four or five dollars. So I think our total budget over the full 24 hours was about sixty dollars for the two of us. Yes. It's been a very very fun 24 hours. Even on a budget, you can have a lot of fun. Maybe it would be good to have like a little more budget to yeah. have to have a better room or just to have a double room. I think. Maybe you will choose to spend your money in different ways. Like we said, better accommodation. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, or, or less on food. Or you can do some activities, like we didn't really do any paid activities yesterday. You won't be able to do like a full day of museums or stuff on this no. budget. If you want to be comfortable, spend a little bit more, maybe. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I wonder what the breakfast of Team Splurge looks like. Over the top. I think they might be having more in the coffee and a muffin, like proper nah. breakfast. Nah. Uh, nah, they splurged too much yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Coffee and mm. coffee and muffins is pretty okay. I think they will do the same, no? This is the luxury breakfast, no? Muffins. I wonder if they have that here as well. We are in a novel hotel right now. The hotel. We are in the Mercure. Oh, we didn't switch hotels overnight. We are still in the Mercure. And we are at breakfast. A mini chocolate bun. We are going to enjoy our last moments on the splurge. Yes. That concludes our stay here in Moscow. We had loads of fun, had some good food, both on a budget as well as on a, splurge, yes. on a splurging uh, mission. So we hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to follow the rest of our adventures because today we start our Trans-Siberian journey, taking the train all the way from Moscow to Beijing of course, with a few stops in between. It's more than 7,000 kilometers on the train. It will be nice to experience the train, experience that daily life, see what uh, kind of sights you have and just enjoy the train ride, which we'll show you in our next video. Yes, we will. So have a good day. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.